we um, have a, 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 some time for Q&A. So I'm very happy for you to ask a question. And uh, I'll do my best to uh, channel the ancestors. <laughs> yeah. So please uh, just let us know and somebody will bring you a mic. Yeah, brother. Will will bring you a mic. Could you please elaborate on what you meant by uh, you don't have a practice when you're in India? Oh, that's a good question, Brother Bobby. At that time, I didn't even really know what, what that meant, practice. Because I remember, um, actually, I had some wonderful experiences over there, and I was around the Dalai Lama's brother, younger brother, and his wife. Uh, I rented a room for uh, five weeks at their house, um, a place that they, where they let rooms, and I just stumbled on it upon it, and there I was, met them, and, and I remember he said to me one day, yes, but do we practice? I thought, what does he mean? And he drove off, and I wondered, what did he mean by that? And sometimes I still ask myself that question because to use that word, I think, can sound like what Brother Will uh, mentioned earlier, uh, that some of us see practice as, okay, I'm going to now practice sitting meditation. As though that's separate from sitting at the table having your breakfast. Um, so something has changed, so now I'm going to practice. Or now I'm going to practice mindful eating. Uh, I wasn't being mindful before, so I'm going to practice this. And, um, but what I've come to feel is that the way I live my life, the way I that is my practice. My practice is holistic. It's, it's not compartmentalized into this is a day of practice and this is not a day of practice. We will, we will walk unmindfully to the, to the park, but then we'll practice mindful walking when we get to the park. No, we are always doing our best to stay with the breath and the body and knowing what's going on around me, what's going on in my mind, what's going on in my body. Of course, my mind is not up here. That's a habit energy, isn't it? To put my hands here. The brain is here, but that's not the mind. The mind is in every cell of the body. It's not separate at all from the body. In fact, my body is not really separate from yours. But again, that's a, you know, that's a big leap to understand that viscerally, to really get it here. Intellectually, I can believe the scientist um, and tie that we enter our you know. uh, so I didn't have that until I found Plum Village and then for me it was I had found finally I had found my family my spiritual family so that retreat in, in Key West in 97 was just the ha happiest week I'd ever spent I was, uh, I felt like a child because I was introduced to all these ways of staying, being present. How we ate, how we picked up our, our utensil, took a bite, placed it, put it back down, put the hands in the lap and chew and really savor the food. Mmm, so good. You know, and then open my eyes. I didn't, it's not necessary to close your eyes when you chew food, but I was doing it maybe that week because it was almost like I'd never had food because it was simple food and yet it was so intensely wonderful because I was present for it. I was practicing. I was mindful. And then to open my eyes and look around and we were encouraged to and smile, you know, sometimes we'd, you'd see we'd get lost and somebody else would be, you know, or they'd just be chewing and um, not making eye contact, but then sometimes, you know, so we, we were together even when we weren't looking at each other, but then we could look and smile and, and it was just so peaceful. I don't know about you, but my childhood and, and my whole life really had been, it was a social event when we ate 
and everybody talking at once, and we still do some of that, but actually it gives me a stomach ache. I, I, I get tense. You know, I really like to have a really quiet meal. Oh, yeah. Even to have uh, loud music around me or something like that, it's just a little bit too stimulating for my, you know, I've learned that about my own body and mind. But that's what I mean by practice. It's really how we live our lives. Yeah. To be present, present in this moment. As Will said earlier, Brother Will, you know, this is the moment we have. But we, of course, the habit energy is to be worrying about the future. And we do it, the mind does it, that's the conditioned mind. You're not different when that happens. The mind is usually, the, it's the ego mind. It really, it's, in fundamentalist Christianity, they might call that mind the, the devil. The devil's got you. Everything's got you but God, because what's God but presence, with a capital P. Yeah. And so, uh, that mind wants to pull us away. So we're either worrying about something that might happen. What if? What if this? What if that? If I do this, what if that happens? If I quit this job, will I ever find another one? I can't stand this job, but oh, I'd better hold on to it because what if I never found another one? That's fear, worrying. Yeah. And if we're not doing that, we're doing what I did so much of. So I've always been much better at regretting. I come from a long line of that. My mother was full of regret, sorrow at what might have been, the choices she didn't make, the conditions she didn't have. So she spent a lot of, I know she did, you could see in her face, you know, regrets. She married, she thought, the wrong man. Yeah, she came from a generation that thought, there's one man for you. You know, so the romantic love kind of thing. Um, yeah. So that mind wants to pull us away. And as Ty says, we have free will. We have free will and we can trust that, but only when we're mindful. Otherwise, we're caught in the conditioned mind and the habit energies are pushing us to just repeat what ancestors have always done. We're continuing the ancestors. We're continuing that pain, the suffering, the fear, the fear of what if. And we're not free. You know, my country, you know, we pride ourselves. We're a free country. We're the, maybe the least free of all the countries on the planet right now. Why? Because we're full of fear. You know, everyone's full of fear, agonizing over something. Hmm. Not free. The people in prison are likely feeling freer. They don't have to deal with all that on the outside. You know, certainly I feel freer, yeah, because of the practice. But I had to kind of remove myself from that environment uh, to find that, to really find it and to be able to be with it and cultivate it and water those seeds, yeah, happy seeds. So thank you for that question, Brother Bob.